Hello and welcome to the car care shop and we got a 2006 Toyota 4Runner with a check engine light, some transmission codes and this is a problem I'm starting to see a lot more in, in this generation 4Runner and in the FJ Cruisers so I wanted to bring it to your attention, we're going to fix it, we're going to hope that the transmission actually survives let's get started with the video, we'll talk about what's going on and how we're going to fix it today and fingers crossed that it is actually fixed and we don't have permanent damage to the transmission So this car got brought into the shop, check engine light is on, and the transmission is not shifting well, especially when it's cold. So this car has solenoid codes, I'll put a couple of those here that this particular car has. And let's talk about solenoid codes for a second here. Solenoids are what change the hydraulic flow inside the transmission to make the specific clutches engage, disengage, torque converter, change the pressure inside the transmission and whatnot. These are little solenoid that are electronically controlled. That's why it's an electronically controlled transmission. That's how it's, it's done. These little solenoids, they're no more than a little solenoid that just moves back forth. If you pulse with modulated, basically you apply power and take it off from it at a very rapid rate. It'll move it and it'll suspend it halfway. And that's how these work. Something with solenoids on Toyota. You have one of three cases when you have solenoid codes. The first thing, which is the most common, low fluid level. It'll actually cause all kinds of solenoid codes because the computer is waiting for the solenoid to do something and it's not doing it. It's actually doing it, but pressure-wise, the ratio is not changing and it thinks there is a problem with the solenoid. That's the first problem. Second problem is, which is also somewhat common, we have a 200,000 mile car with original fluid. That's what ends up starting potentially happening. You have so much contamination that the solenoid is just either completely clogged or what it's supposed to do is not happening because of a fluid passage clog. That's another thing. That's why you got to be careful with solenoid replacement. Don't just see the code. Oh, let's just go replace the solenoid. Be careful. Investigate why. And the third common thing is solenoid itself failed. Usually when a solenoid fails completely, you will have a permanent transmission condition. It won't shift or it'll be stuck in gear or it'll just be all over the place. That's usually your telltale sign that there's a catastrophic failure of the solenoid. Now solenoids, apart from taking them out of the car and bench testing them, you can't really test them well. You can, however, test the resistance, but the resistance doesn't tell you much. That's the problem. You can activate them, hear them click, but that's not a conclusive test until you remove them out of the car. And at that point, most people will actually end up replacing them. And it's, some of these solenoids are pretty expensive. One note on solenoids, never use an aftermarket solenoid. I mean, we've said this all the time. Toyota transmissions usually don't have issues. You maintain them. We rarely have issues unless it's an abnormal case where you're really overloading this transmission. But this particular car, which is what we're going to talk about, the common problem is, this one happens to be of the first variety. We have low fluid and that comes, there comes the new common problem. Let's lift this thing up, let's look underneath it and we'll show you what's going on here and then we're going to fix it. We got to fill the fluid here and hopefully this transmission comes back to life because obviously you run a transmission low on fluid long enough, something's got to give and that's not good. We're hoping that's not the case here because this car needs a lot of work and the customer is holding off until we make sure that that transmission is good because otherwise it might not be worth saving, unfortunately. Let's get it up in the air. Let's take a look at what's going on here. Now, obviously, if you look around here, there's all kinds of fluid leaking everywhere. So we're seeing this a lot, and this is becoming kind of with age. If you come around, Jose, show them this line. This little transmission line, is, see how corroded it is? It is leaking. And unfortunately, when these leak, this is the cooler line, it's gonna just, dump all the fluid very rapidly. And we've had cases where it's just completely ruptured within a matter of a few minutes, transmission is out of fluid and we've seen damage to these transmissions that otherwise would outlast this car. If you own one of these and you live in the rust belt, you're gonna want to be checking them. If they look rusty, there's actually a very inexpensive part to replace, very DIY friendly. If you can do an oil change, you could do this. Replace it, 
preventatively if you see it rusty and we're not going to arrive at this point. Now let's look at the rest of this truck before we actually start fixing this and hopefully we're good. This is rusty. That's one thing if you live especially in the south this is typical here but usually this is the first spot that rots in these. I mean we have flakes but it's not rot. I don't have any rot here. Same thing on the other side of this. It's pretty solid here so that's decent. Now, uh, we do have some Bluetooth boots. So this is unfortunately going to need axles at this point because this one, mm, kind of on the borderline. Is this an original axle? See, this one is not an original axle. See this clamp? That's no original clamp. That's an aftermarket axle. Usually originals will not just completely rip like that. I mean, look at this. That's like completely gone. These are the cheapo aftermarket ones. This is, this is what ends up happening with aftermarket axles, folks. You can't boot them because these are not the same size as the originals and the new boot won't fit and that's what happens. Same thing here, which leads us to our next problem. This wheel barely turns. Look at this clamp, same deal. Turn it. That's not an original clamp. And uh, this boot's also Bluetooth. And when you see rust inside, yeah, time to replace these axles. Unfortunately, you can't boot, reboot these because you can take it apart, spend all the time, and then everything will be just, everything will be corroded inside, and it'll be binding, and at that point, what are we doing here? And they are aftermarket, so we don't even, even if they were not this bad, I don't reboot aftermarket axles. They just don't fit, and they don't work right, and we're not gonna do this. Now, the other problem with this is, this wheel is completely seized, because this caliper is, uh, yeah, it has seen better days. And, and now I'm looking at this. We're actually, he okayed us to replace the calipers so the transmission is okay. Looking at this line, I don't think this line is gonna happen. I end up making a line for it. I usually end up making lines for these. They're just, they're a few bucks from Toyota, but I don't know, these love to rust all the time. We'll put that nickel copper stuff that doesn't corrode. I think it works better. Now all this is just that leak from the transmission line. So we're gonna take care of that in a second. But let's look at the rest of it. Frame is pretty solid. Brake lines, uh, you have seen better days, but they're holding. Transmission transfer case otherwise, don't have no leaks, so that's good. I see like, if you bring it around, Jose, and show this. Like I see shadows here. Looks like there might have been a leak at some point or fixed, or this is a very small seepage. I don't think we have bigger issues at this point, so we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, aftermarket muffler here. It looks very fresh. Looks like this was uh, welded on a few weeks ago. But I wonder if, if this was the case. So this has also Bluetooth shocks, folks. This is... That's, that's another thing with these. You know, this used to be super, super common with the previous generation, like you'll get one shock broken and customer will, I mean, this drives. Customers say the truck, when you go over bumps, it just bounces in a weird way. Well, yeah, because there's no shock, usually one side. But this one has the double Bluetooth. I mean, you can pull the whole wheel down. It's just hung by the spring, which is just conveniently just sitting there. It's extremely dangerous, this is, but again, a customer does not want to do this until we know that transmission is good. Unfortunately, and this is again one of those uh, why did you do this Toyota moments, this has x -Rius. And if you're not familiar with what x does, I'll be completely honest, it's a system that does absolutely nothing, just bankrupt you when it goes out. So, you see this line? The way this x works, this shock is connected via this line to this little center shock right here. And then all this is, it crosses, the line crosses and it's connected to this shock. This shock right there, which is, has a small leak. Not terrible, but small. And then same thing with that shock, center shock here and connected to that side. You know, for you guys that off-road with these forerunners and everything. Is it really a benefit of this off-road? Because I can tell you, on-road, you drive exactly the same. 
I can never tell the difference between the X3S trucks or not. You convert them to non-X3S, like you put OEM, because they fit, everything fits exactly the same, drives exactly the same, at least to me on the road, maybe off-road there are some benefits, doubt it, seems like everybody's converting, but if you know some benefits, put them down in the comments where everybody would know, including myself, but if you have X3S and uh, leaks, just convert it. And that's all I'm gonna tell you because I don't see any benefit to them. And then this happens and now it's like, I, I'm not, don't take my quote on this for this generation forerunner, but the next generation, the fifth gen, I don't like 4,500 bucks to replace all of these because you have to replace the four shocks. Oh, and here's the other thing. And then the main thing why this is, this is gonna bankrupt you. Now you can't just go replace these two shocks because this system has fluid in it and this fluid, you can't add to it. Once, it, once one of them leaks, you have to replace everything because it has a pre-measured amount of fluid and it has these quick disconnects where they charge them with fluid and that's it. And if you don't, it'll make all kinds of clunking noises. Yeah, not the greatest design, honestly. I'll, I'll be honest with you, this is it's not a good idea, but first things first, we gotta address that transmission. So another thing you gotta check on these forerunners is when you get a little rusty one, is these brake lines, you see that? That's also not great. Like the tip of it, you see how it's coated here? And then the tip of it is not, like right, right here. It's really not ideal. And another spot that you can see it a little better is right here. See how the coating ends right here? And this part is not coated. And that's the spot that rusts, of course. Now, rear brakes on this, not bad. Tires, really not good. I mean, this. It feels like a sandpaper right here. That's that's the problem, you know. People say buy Toyota, they last forever and all that, and that's true if you take care of them. But when it piles up like this, it becomes a problem. I mean, between the line, the calipers, the axles, the shocks all around, even if you convert it, the first time you convert it, it's a little expensive, and tires, and what else is gonna pop up, the brake lines, we get to a point where it's like, this is not good. But what are you gonna do? The owner of this car actually is debating about selling the car, moving on, but you can't sell it like that with a leaking transmission that potentially somebody buys it as a, as a little beater that gonna take it around town and whatnot. And the next thing you know, the trans goes, that's not good. So he wants to at least fix that and the brakes. The brakes are really bad. I think he should fix the shocks because this is a safety concern, everything else axles we can live with but let's let's do this well now you guys know what, what we're working with here let's get this line done let's get it replaced and actually this is missing that shield i was thinking we had it somewhere but no this is missing the shield not the end of the world at this point but let's replace this line we got to top off the trans fluid well, adjust the fluid, of course, is a sealed transmission. Can't, no dipstick here. We'll adjust the fluid level, and then fingers crossed. We're gonna hope for the best here, that the trans shifts fine, and we're not gonna drive it in this video because we gotta do some extensive driving, fully cold, fully hot, fully cold, few times to make sure we don't have any codes coming back, shifting fine, everything. But we're gonna do like a kind of on the lift test to see if it, because this thing, when you put it in drive and it's cold, I mean, 10 second span so, so until you see drive because it's low and fluid of course but let's hope that is not damaged let's get to work and change this line okay so i would i don't know how these hoses are gonna be when we take them out i did get them in case but we're gonna find out they are original hoses so i'm gonna look at it once we get them off i got the hoses and the clamps Let's hope we don't need them. Save this customer a few bucks. And this bill is already, a bill that's coming, if this is good, it's gonna be pretty high. This truck needs a lot of work. Okay, let's see how these hoses behave. Oh, this line one is already broken. See that? As soon as I moved it, it just, yeah, there it goes. See, that's what happens with these. I wonder if you just break it. Ooh, okay, all right, well, we still have some fluid. Let's see. So if you ever have a stubborn hose that don't wanna come out, you get a little pick like that. 
put it between the hose and the pipe. Just gonna open it up and then take some silicone spray and spray it in there. And I'm spraying it straight at the camera. That's, a, that's very wise to do. Sorry, Jose. Oh, actually, sorry, camera. We're introducing our camera to a new fluid that it hasn't gotten before from filming all these videos. Aha! That came right out. You saw that? What's going to happen? Is the line going to break or is this going to come out? Oh, it came out. All right. Well, there's good news. Fluid is clean. It smells, smells like the fine variety. Doesn't smell burnt, so that's pretty good. So far, so good. I'm gonna move this a little bit to the side. Let's get this other one. Oh, I felt it move. Okay. There we go. You know, I really like the color of that trans fluid. Looks pretty good. That's a good sign. Now, let me look at these hoses. Got this far. Did we pinch any of them? Sometimes these hoses get so stuck, and by the time you get them off, they're all damaged. But these, these two look okay. So I think we're gonna replace these. And the last two. Pending pipe, which I have a feeling both of these bolts are going to break. That came out. Wow, I was not expecting that. So if you're taking bolts that you can't heat up, because we can't heat this one up, radiator, condenser is right here, and there's actually not very good access to the back. Don't want to introduce heat here. You're gonna take something kind of on, off, on, off, so you can work it back and forth and not just get the bolt stuck. See if that works here. That came out. There it goes. So here's the line that actually causes all this. I mean, this is just completely gone. That already broke. This one's solid. This one broke. And this one broke too. I mean, this is completely gone, especially this one. This is where it leaked from. And this whole area is completely compromised. And that's where this entire leak is from. So, let's go get the new one and uh, we'll install it, fill it up with fluid and uh, guys, keep the owner of this car in your prayers right now. I just hope this comes through so they can get a few more years out of, the, out of this and it's getting too rusty here. Here's the new line, very nice and pretty. And we're going to put new bolts, so whoever takes this off. Well, I was going to say 18 years from now, but I don't know if this frame's got 18 more years left, but 
we try, we try. All right, that looks much better. So these, okay, maybe I should have taken these out before. Oh, it's coming out. This has these little caps. We're gonna save these for a rainy day. And that rainy day is when we take one of these lines off of a radiator or something, and cap them off so they're not making a mess everywhere. That's how you start collecting some of these things that come in handy with other jobs. And this is the Toyota way. I don't know why they cover these. I mean, the whole bag comes with, uh, with a, it's, this pipe comes in a sealed bag, and, but we still put the things at the end, protect them. This is how Toyota does things. We won't fault them for it. Just wish this thing was a little bit better at rust. Try to line up this clamp exactly where it was, right there. I like that. I should have probably put the other line first. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yes. See a thing. Uh, needs like that is much better. I like that. I like that a lot. Now let's get these other two. This one. This one. Whenever you work with these clamps, folks, and you use the same hose, put them back exactly where they're at, and then you won't have leaks. Otherwise, they'll leak, because they're already imprinted on the hose. This is the one thing with these clamps. I love these clamps, I think they're the best. But if you don't put the clamp exactly where it was imprinted, it might seep through and start leaking. Well, this is in, we're gonna, clean this car at a later time because there is literally fluid all over the place but I do want to clean where we worked just so we can make sure there are no new leaks as we get it running again I think that's good let's go fill up this trans and we'll hope for the best here so the fill plug is right here on this transmission this is a sealed transmission to 24 Cooperate. Yeah, it's not going to cooperate, of course. I don't think this has ever been off. Really not a good sign. Gonna need a bigger ratchet. Okay, take two. Let's try this one more time. Oh, God. This is not good. Oh, here it goes. Oh my God. I don't think, welcome to 2024, but I don't think this thing has been off since uh, <laughs> 2006 when they filled it from the factory. Oh. It's usually have an O-ring behind them so they get stuck. Once you get a few threads out, they work, but not this one. this one. I just hope we didn't pull all the thread out. It doesn't feel like it, but oh, that was a little too tight. There it goes. Did we pull thread out? No. We're good. Here is that uh, little o-ring that sits here. As all there is, there's no gasket. You can reuse this o-ring. All it does is just seal it from splashing. There's actually no fluid sitting here. And get our little transmission fill contraption here. I'm gonna turn it on. It's gonna be loud for a little bit. 
We're gonna fill it up with one quart. And hope for the best. Okay, well, I'm just gonna hand install this just so we wouldn't get splash. Because we might have to add more. Let's tackle the next thing before we start this thing up and uh, adjust the level. Uh, knowing how this has never been off since 2006, I think the adjustment bolt will also be the same thing. So on this transmission, five millimeter hex, this is gonna be your standpipe this is where you check the fluid level and the 14 millimeter is your drain so we're not draining we're gonna just get this off before we do anything very rusty sound of that my back didn't like that but I'm gonna leave the socket here because if I get it out I think we're gonna be able to get it off again well I think we're ready moment of truth this is ready to come out see some fluid so we got to start the car get it to a certain temperature and then we'll adjust the fluid level so let's do that moment of truth let's find out but before we do you guys always ask me what the miles on the cars are because i always forget to say it this particular 06 forerunner has 99,994. so maybe an hour test driving and making sure the trans is good it's gonna cross to 100,000, and that's very low miles for a toyota see the thing is most of the problems we saw with this car rust related that line that potentially wiped out this transmission the shocks in the rear, the brake lines are kind of questionable. Now the axles, those have been replaced with aftermarket. That's that's how it is with aftermarket axles. And my guess would be the boots were leaking and somebody just decided to put aftermarket axles. But moment of truth, we're going to start the car. I'm going to give it a few seconds, put it in drive, see if it immediately engages into drive or it's going to take a minute. But that shouldn't be enough to warm it up high enough, but I'm not going to do it for a long time because we don't want it getting too hot and then we got to wait for it to cool down. So without further ado, fingers crossed. All right, here we go. I went immediately into drive. Almost immediately into reverse. That's much better. I think I just needed the fluid circulator. Switch through all the gears. Back to neutral. Reverse. Reverse is immediate. Drive is immediate. I didn't do that before, so that's already a good sign. So here's what we'll do. We have to adjust the fluid level. I'm going to have Jose sit here. So the next section of the video Let's just hope it's not upside down and all the colors are wrong because I'm going to be doing the camera from here on out for the next few minutes. Let's do this. Hold on. Is this thing on? Hey, yeah, it's on. Hopefully. Jose, if we lose this shot, sorry. I just fix cars for a living. I don't do this camera stuff anymore. Okay. I think we are rolling, so let's, uh, let's do this. So here's what we're going to do. Jose is going to start the car. We don't need to do drive reverse because I already circulated the fluid. We're going to wait for the temperature to get right around 99. But in the meantime, I am going to check to see if we have excess fluid. Because if we don't, if we have nothing, we're going to have to shut off and add fluid. So Jose, go ahead and start the car. Nothing. Shut it off, Jose. We're gonna have to add some more fluid. So, you guys stand by for a bit while I figure out things. Oh, I'm gonna take that fill plug again. See, this is why I didn't tighten it because I figured we may need more fluid. I'm gonna add another quart and we'll see what happens. I'm gonna add another quart. See what happens. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let's try this one more time. So this time I'm going to have Jose, because now we know the fluid was low. I'm going to have Jose go drive reverse. So Jose, go ahead and start it and then go drive reverse, please. Jose. This thing was not joking around. This has been leaking for a long, long time. I mean, I added two quarts and we're still low. That's not good. That's really not good. Adding another quart. Okay, Jose, one more time. Drive reverse, slower this time a little bit. All right, park. Wow, I am seriously concerned. You know what, shut it off, shut it off. I am seriously concerned now because I hear the transmission pump howling. I usually mean kind of like a power steering pump that is low. I hear it howling, which means uh, we are seriously low. I am gonna go ahead and add two more quarts this time because if you overfill it we're not driving it we're just going to be here taking out the excess so let me do that i feel like we've done this 17 times now well now we have two quarts in let's see jose one more time this one this time no drive reverse let's just see what's what's going on here Okay, I think we have good news. Drive reverse. Hard on the brakes. All right. Well, moment of truth. Okay, that's beautiful. Only thing that is not beautiful is there's no gasket. Jose, shut it off. Let me go get a gasket ready. We do not have a gasket on this guy. And now we're talking five quarts in or somewhere in the vicinity of that. Okay, this is the final thing. I got my gasket right here. I'm looking at the temperature. We are at 80 degrees. We need to get it right around 99. Go ahead and start it one more time, Jose. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drain the excess now. When we get to 99, we'll check it one more time. It's 82, and I hear one of the idlers making a little bit of noise. Another common thing with these. Now we just watch paint dry. That's, that's how this feels like sometimes. Ah, right there. See that? That's the nice trickle we're waiting for. We're not done yet because we're not at temperature. We're below the temperature. So you can do this when you're below the temperature just to get the excess out so you're ready because once you get into that temperature range, folks, if you want to know what I'm doing here with these sealed transmissions, I have a couple of videos on these. I'll leave them here. But this is basically what we're doing. Right. We'll wait for it to get to the magic number of 97. Let's put it at 97. I think that will be a good number for us here. We're at 83 right now. So if you're ever doing this, you can put it in drive. That'll actually heat up the fluid faster. So that's what we're going to do. Jose, go ahead and put it in drive. Keep it in drive, please. Thank you. And while we wait for uh, paint to dry, I'm looking at my lines, they look good. And the temperature is still at 85. 
It's gonna be a minute. I'll be back. We are at the magic temperature. So let's drain the excess here. Now that we've reached the temperature and the fluid rose, we're gonna get all, there we go. We need to get to that trickle. We are good. Jose, you can go ahead and shut it off. We are very, very good right now. Go ahead and snug this down, do the clean. We're gonna start our testing on this thing. See if, see if operation was a success or not. Don't mind that loud noise. Of course, we have a car running inside the shop with the door closed, so that's the exhaust fan actually. Well, I think we are good. Let us uh, rescue Jose. We'll make Jose land, so I don't have to do some camera work. Not very good camera work anymore, and we'll talk about this. So folks, before I wrap up this video, I want to ask you for something. I actually need your help here with this one. The gentleman that owns this car is such a nice guy. And you know, he has this car and he wants it fixed and he hopes that it is fixed and he's ready to do everything else to keep it going for a few more years here. But this is not looking good, I have to admit. You know, I, I anticipated this to have like a court low, we're gonna top it off, the codes will go away and we'll be okay. But I added five quarts. Now, granted, we might have drained maybe up to a quart, but we were definitely three quarts plus low on this thing. And that is not good. I have to admit that. That means that the torque converter was very low on fluid and we're gonna hope for the best here. Now, we can't do it in this video because I'm gonna have to drive this and driving this with broken rear shocks here is gonna be a little bit of a interesting proposition because we have to drive it highway speeds, basically, with no rear shocks. That's going to be interesting. So we're going to have to see what we're going to do here to do this safely. And because I don't want this customer to put the money in the car. And then two weeks later, I get a call. Hey, the codes are back. Trans not shifting well. And we put all this money into this car. That would be a good situation. So we got to really spend the time here and make sure that it's good before we recommend anything else. So this is where I need your help with your prayers, your best wishes that this thing comes around, the trans behaves and keeps going. I know we kind of pushed the limit with it, with this leak and this much low on fluid, but keep the owner in your prayers. And before we wrap up the video, folks, let's give you a quick tour of what's going on in the shop the day we filmed this video. Let's start with the tour of the shop, and you guys didn't see this. This is what I was using to uh, fill up the trans fluid here. There's a little air tool that pushes the fluid up this makes life easier. This is a 99 Tacoma. This is in for upper lower ball joints. Beautiful 3RZ. We don't talk about this engine a lot in this channel. It's a great little motor. Very underpowered. And this got replaced by the TR series engine. Very good engine, this one. Very understated and nobody really talks about it. Maybe we should change that because it's a really good motor. This one also has frozen parking brake cranks so I usually replace those because they're actually very inexpensive and you'll spend so much more trying to free them up and then in the end three months later they're back to seized again so I usually just replace the cranks on these and it'll work flawlessly for the next 10-15 years and moving away from this so we're almost done with this actually the ball joints are in we just press them press the uppers and lowers our bolt-ons we're gonna do the cranks tomorrow in the back and that should be wrapped up for this we had a little bit of delay on this with parts with some of these cranks this camry all should already know and i think half the world knows it at this point this is the one we rebuilt an, a motor on i think it had 190,000 miles something like that we put actually didn't rebuild it put a short block and it was burning oil this is doctor's car really takes care of this car but they were victim of the 10,000 mile oil change interval here it is, 40,000 miles later. He's very happy with it. I think it's in here for one of the driver's side CV boots leaking, oil change, I think transmission fluid is due, so we're doing that as well. It has 240,000 miles, something like that. Don't quote me in the exact number, but right around 240. This 80 series Land Cruiser looks, may look somewhat familiar. Do you remember this video? 
Yeah. This is the same owner. Unfortunately, that beautiful 80 series that we did the video on, it was such a beautiful car. Fortunately, got involved in an accident and the insurance company totaled it. It was severe damage to the suspension, severe damage to the body, and just things were not good. So this is the same owner, but the same car. It's actually a little bit older. It's a 94. That was a 95. Not as clean, but it is absolutely rust-free. So he wants to bring this one back to the shape that the other one is and continue. So he just dropped it off. He just bought it. We're going to go through it, see what it needs, and kind of construct an action plan so he can slowly get things up to up to date and things get good drives pretty good looks okay does have a little bit of fading but beautiful 80 series that ls430 is a 51,000 mile completely rust free ultra ls430 that one is a weird one folks that one needed a fuel pump i have a feeling somebody's been there and that fuel pump was questionable a little bit I think it's an aftermarket fuel pump. It had a problem with check engine light, continuous, and then somebody did some work, and I, I don't know what happened, but the fuel pump was definitely questionable. I have never in my entire career done a fuel pump on an LS430. That was the first one, and I think it will be the last. They just don't go, and it, does, it has 51,000 miles. If it was my 600,000 mile one, maybe. Well, not 51,000, so that was a strange one, but we're kind of doing more testing. It also needs that the original timing belt replaced, so we're driving it some more just to make sure everything is good. The Camry underneath it has, I think, 250,000 miles. Original owner, very, very clean Camry. It needs motor mounts, just has a lot of vibration. I think uh, they gave what they gave, and this one is a beautiful SE. They're kind of rare. That ES350 is actually a drop-off for tomorrow. Customer bought this car used, and the AC doesn't work right. And this, this is a car actually we saw last fall. AC doesn't work right. I hook up the machine to see, you know, check pressures, whatever. The machine tells me that the refrigerant is contaminated. We have R12, we have R1234YF, we have R134. So we're actually gonna evacuate the contaminated fluid it has to go into a special container and that container has to be disposed of according to EPA regulations this is kind of a giant process so I told him drop it off for a day let us go through it make sure everything's good and then pick it up at the end of the day so we're gonna that's actually the second car tomorrow I work on first thing to get it on the machine is a very long process to flush the whole thing and get that contaminated fluid disposed of properly. This LS430, beautiful LS430, we've actually guys have seen it in the past. We've done a lot of work on this. It's back for a check engine light. There was an air free, not actually not an air free ratio sensor, an oxygen sensor and a few hoses, some of the PCV hoses. This car is a rust free car. It's currently in Michigan, but it used to be in the south. So all the hoses are all brittle and cracking and causing some lean codes. So this is actually done. We're just doing the final testing. They're picking it up next week, but we keep it here in the shop. So every chance we get, we just jump in the car, go drive it, make sure everything's good. Cause I, folks are really nice folks and they drove from far away. So we're gonna make sure it's 110% for them here. This is the Camry. I think you saw this Camry in the last shop update here. This is the one that needed a torque converter, but also we found the VTI gear rattling, the water pump was head play, the rear main seal was leaking, the drive belt tension, this one is actually done tomorrow. Fill it up with fluid, update the software, and go on the final test drives, and I think they are picking this up next week. This is from out of town as well, but this is pretty much done. Supra were actually in, in waiting now to get actually started on it, so that's I'm glad that the engine is back, although there are a couple of things I'm really not happy with. We're working on those as well. Folks, there's a lot more cars outside. Well, I'm not even close to done. I hope this was all we have. Folks, once more, please keep the owner of this Forerunner in your prayers, best wishes, however way you prefer, because such a nice gentleman. I really, look, the car is not in the best shape in the planet, of course, but if they can get a few more years, that would be great. We're going to try to help them as much as possible with getting everything safe. It's never going to be perfect, but safe so they can drive it safely without issues. But I really hope that transmission holds, doesn't give us more issues because that was a 
way low on fluid. That is a concern. Folks, I hope this video is helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some uh, videos. Until the next video, folks. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.